welcome to StarCast from Planet Waves. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, the host of PlanetWaves.fm and the author of the Planet Waves Horoscope. Today's edition is the week ahead for Monday, the 30th of August, 2021. We begin this week with the planet Mercury in a new sign. That happened on Sunday. Mercury is now in the first degree of Libra. It joins Venus and Vesta and a bunch of uh, little guys in Libra. And the interesting thing about v uh, Mercury in this position is that it is uh, on what is called the Aries point. Now, the Aries point is the first degree of Aries, but by extension, a whole bunch of other degrees get the distinction. And those include any time a planet is sitting in the first or second degree of a cardinal sign, Libra is one of them, and it acts like an amplifier or a repeating station. So the things that you say today and maybe tomorrow will have some extra emphasis and, uh, and reach people in a, a bit of a louder way. Now, another uh, thing about Mercury in Venus, excuse me, <laughs> another thing about Mercury in Libra, which is ruled by Venus, is that uh, there's quite a few planets right behind it in Virgo. So one of those is uh, the weird little hypothetical trans Pluto and the Sun and Mars. And the thing is that a lot of uh, planets, that much energy in Virgo, not really a lot, but there's certainly plenty with uh, Mars in Virgo, which is a bit itchy and scratchy. And the Sun, which is looking for some kind of expression in a world that is not that good at allowing uh, people and things to express themselves. Uh, that is a bit, let's say, technical and potentially frustrated, again, uh, considering the position of Mars, which I'm going to get into in half a moment. But all this Libra is calling for a diplomatic approach to things. And so uh, there may be some translation required, or you may have to write two or three drafts of something uh, such that uh, you don't uh, kind of um, rub people the wrong way when you... Uh, could just as easily, you know, get them to at least uh, see or understand your point of view. So uh, do your best to pre-process any frustration that you may have. And then if you have to make a presentation, which even can mean asking someone something, telling someone something, proposing some kind of an arrangement, find a way to say it that is honest and also that is diplomatic uh, that actually has the potential to work. The moon uh, is in Gemini at the moment, and the Gemini moon is doing a couple of uh, things that are noteworthy, uh, one of which is it is, is making a square to Neptune over the next day and a half or so. And so when the moon is square Neptune, uh, particularly from Gemini, that can be slippery. It might not be quite easy to know exactly what you're feeling, and you may be on, uh, let's say, both sides of the story or be able to see or feel either viewpoint that's expressed by Gemini, and there's also some viewpoint hesitation indicated when, uh, when Pisces is highlighted, which it currently is by both multiple planets and also the moon passing through. And then, in addition, Mars is moving into an opposition uh, to Neptune. Uh, that is uh, exact. In a, in a few days, it's building up now. It's, it's a long-lasting thing, meaning that it's been slowly creeping up on us for a while and will continue uh, to be very strong over uh, the next, uh, I would say, even the next week or so. But it's at maximum intensity right now, and the moon is about to pass through this opposition between Mars and Neptune. This is the Gemini moon passing between an opposition between Mars and Neptune. And so we really have to be super careful on the honesty issues. What is true? What is not true? That Mars in Virgo uh, really wants to make sure that things are true on all levels, including technically, especially that being one of the properties of Virgo is a a technical accuracy, and a detailed understanding of things. But 
uh, these planets in Pisces have exactly the opposite effect. That's more of a, does it sound good? Does it look good? Is it sort of sellable? What's the story here? Well, the story doesn't matter so much, actually. Let's say the story matters, but the truth does not matter. So we haven't really heard enough, I don't think, uh, out of my mouth or out of the mouth of the astrology community when we're talking about the very long-term visit of, um, of, of Neptune in Pisces. That's like a decade and a half kind of a thing. That goes on for a while. We've got another uh, easily four years of that uh, going on. And so uh, this is part of what I think is the overwhelming blur between reality and unreality and the concept that seems to be floating around that everything is a matter of opinion. You have your opinion. They have their opinion. My ignorance is as good as your intelligence. Well, that doesn't really wash. And uh, in case anyone is interested in being scientific, it's not really all that scientific. What matters scientifically is, is there a method to the experiment? Is there a control group to the experiment? Is this experiment repeatable? Those are really the important things to think about when we're thinking about whether something is true or not. Do these facts check out? What are they sourced back to? Can they be confirmed? Who are all these so-called fact-checking organizations, and why do we care what they think? Can any schmo just hang up a shingle that says, Hi, I'm a fact-checker, and I've given this half of a... Pinocchio knows, which means it's partly true and partly not true. Well, uh, it, it is hard work to get to the bottom of things, and really it is not the work of fact-checkers. It's the work of journalists, investigators, and researchers uh, because one fact barely means anything. What does mean something is one fact in the context of many other facts and seeing what this thing called a fact pattern is about, though with Mars in Virgo opposite Neptune in Pisces, uh, there is going to be some competition for uh, what we think is true and what we think is not true. Anyway, that aspect uh, kind of squares up very early Tuesday morning Eastern time. The moon-Neptune square is exact at 9.40 uh, and 44 seconds a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so figure 9.41 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, for about, therefore, four hours ahead of that, starting at about, I would say, maybe 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we have that Mars square Neptune. And the, the thing about Mars-Moon contacts, and especially when Neptune is, is in the picture, is to pay attention to what you're angry about. Uh, most people either kind of vent rage or suppress their anger or make up stories or rationalize and the implied message here is to notice exactly what is making you angry at any one time they may have to peel through a couple of layers to find that uh, you may think it's one thing and then it turns out to be another thing uh, so this may take some conscious sorting out especially with a mars neptune aspect happening but you want to know the truth about this and, and uh, you know, give yourself the time and space to get there. One last warning about Mars-Neptune aspects that are on this 90-degree type of setup, the opposition, the square, and certain other subtle ones, is that they can be self-destructive. And so if you have any self-destructive tendencies that you're working on, you might want to monitor them and see uh, whether you uh, can make some decisions and, and maybe... Uh, make choices that are more productive for you. Uh, notice how you treat people. There may be ways that are more productive in how you uh, communicate and correspond with others. And the overarching reminder of Mars and Neptune in any aspect is to uh, persist in being honest with yourself. I know that is not the uh, the zeitgeist these days. Um, let's see if we've got anything else going on. I covered the moon, square, Pallas Athene, and, uh, and, and well, I didn't mention Pallas Athene. Okay, so uh, there is uh, what I consider to be an important asteroid, ordinary asteroid, not any kind of weird thing out in the Kuiper Belt or a centaur with a strange elliptical orbit, but a main belt asteroid named 
Pallas, sometimes called Pallas Athene. She represents the Greek goddess Athena, who is the patron of and namesake of the city of Athens and also the goddess of wisdom and also law and protection. So she's a very important figure uh, from Greek mythology, I believe considered one of the titans who sat at the great table of the 12 gods and the kind of boil down to uh, the asteroid Pallas Athene, at least in some expressions, is who are you adjusting your story for uh, to make them happy? So be careful when you find yourself adapting and adjusting your story to please other people. This is uh, not a very, let's say, useful activity, but even without judging it in any way to notice uh, when it's happening. Notice the modifications you make in telling the same version of events to different people and notice the effect you're going for and the emphasis that you might have uh, with any particular version of, uh, of, of events. Along a similar line, uh, the sun is working its way into aspects with two of the original centaurs. Uh, we are working into sun quincunx Chiron and sun opposite Nessus. So when you've got the sun in uh, aspect to centaur planets, you, you get questions like, um, what, what are the ego wounds that are uh, influencing you in some way? Um, I think that the whole uh, presence of Chiron in Aries is a reminder that we are in times where it is very important to assert your individuality. And, and by that, I, I don't mean your you know, very special shoes or uh, that awesome makeup job or whatever it might be. Your individuality, meaning your most deeply held beliefs, and notice when you are adjusting for your peers or for other people. Uh, th th there is a rather deep problem afoot in society right now, I think, driven by these Aquarian-era planets, uh, these two most massive and largest planets in the solar system, Saturn and Jupiter, together comprising uh, about 2,200 times the size of the Earth, located in Aquarius, and this is dialing up the juice on the whole peer pressure conformist thing. So there is astrology behind all of this conform, conform, and all of this use of technology in whatever form that may take uh, to kind of goad or pressure you into doing so. And so what uh, you, know, you, you have here is a kind of integrity test. Uh, the, the integrity test being about are you capable of standing in the truth of what you know and what you understand, and then what exactly is it that can lure you or, uh, let's say, coax you out of, um, out of doing that. Uh, at, uh, let's see, last aspect I'm going to mention today is um, occurs on Wednesday, and uh, that's early Wednesday morning, so uh, we, we leave off uh, very early Wednesday morning here uh, with Mercury in a square aspect to Pholus. And the question here is, do you have the sensation that once you start expressing your truth, once you start explaining to people where you're really coming from or re revealing to them where you're coming from, will you be able to stop? And are you holding back telling certain truths about yourself because there's something else that you don't want to mention. There's some real tension there, uh, and it is building now between Mercury and a centaur planet called Pholus. I am about to record the extended birthday reading for Virgo. Uh, we will add that a little bit later in the day to the StarCast tab at planetwaves.net. That's where this program originates, in case you're listening in some far-flung corners of the internet where you may have never been to our website. There are two, planetwaves.net and planetwaves.fm, with my extended Friday night radio program avail available, hundreds of programs available on demand at any time. This is your Monday Report. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you again Wednesday. Eric Francis signing off for now. Thanks for listening and stay in touch.